warning this documentary contains real life experiences and quite intense subjects so if you are of a nervous disposition i highly recommend that you do not watch otherwise i hope you enjoy Hello, my name's Will. Three years ago, I was a nervous wreck. Two years ago, I attempted suicide. And today, I'm here to tell you my story and the story of the person that has made me who I am. one of the coolest guys on planet Earth. Now this homegrown star had an amazing 2020. And the phenomenal Young Blood. Young Blood. Young Blood. Young Blood. Please welcome Young Blood. Real name being Dominic Harrison, Youngblood popped onto the scene in 2017 with his first single, King Charles. Stop being a twatty! And ever since then he has continued to take mainstream rock music by absolute storm, claiming two number one albums, many charting singles and a massive group of highly dedicated fans. <laughs> But where you have love, you will always have hate. And in this documentary, I want to show you exactly who Youngblood is. To understand anybody, you always have to go back to the start. Now, Dominic Richard Harrison was born on the 5th of August, 1997, to his parents, Justin and Samantha, and he has two sisters called Isabel and Jemima. Being born and raised in Doncaster, that has automatically put Youngblood at a disadvantage with people having prejudice towards his background, and he has gained a lot of criticism for people saying that he's faking a working class background. As good of a relationship he seems to have with his mum and due to these past experiences and the nature of his lyrics, this I believe is what makes fans so dedicated and relate so well to his music. If you're going through the worst time possible and then you just accidentally find something that embraces you and you put all your trust in, it's the most beautiful fucking thing in the world. People are just coming to it and finding it naturally because they stumble upon it serendipitously. You can't fucking stop it because you can't stop love ever. And it's really fucking cool. 
that we uh, get to do this every day. Yeah, I'm really thankful. A massive influence for Youngblood was his granddad, who sadly passed away last year. Because of that, he has always been interested in music and in his teenage years was in bands and has always been active with doing music. Uh, Dominic from Yorkshire, I think probably one of the youngest um, artists tonight. How old are you? Uh, 17, 17 years old. Yeah, yeah. After that, he went on and did a bit of acting in Disney shows and in Emmerdale, and that is something that over his career has really come back to haunt him. The truth about Youngblood. This isn't emo or punk rock. This is the behaviour of a sport little brat whose dad paid his way into the music industry by selling stolen guitars from Italy. Will I run away? What are you doing here? <laughs> After this, his music career took off when he dropped his first singles, King Charles and I Love You Will You Marry Me. Now, as much as these singles didn't do amazingly well for him, they did gather some sort of audience that was a stepping stone to the big time. The following year, he drops his debut album, 21st Century Liability. And this is where the numbers for Youngblood really started to come in. Success also passed over onto his next EP where he dropped the biggest hit he's ever had. Despite being snubbed by the charts because of its graphic content, this song is one of the biggest TikTok bops of all time. This song did incredibly well for Youngblood and being, whether he's middle class or went to private school or not, being a young lad from the north of England, living with your family, in two years for you to go from dropping your first song to having a song that everyone is listening to is huge and it's undeniable and I don't think he knew what was going to come next. When you go from a kid with a dream to a global superstar, people are going to want to work with you, and Youngblood's worked with MGK and Travis Barker, Willow, Demi Lovato, Avril Lavigne, Ollie Sykes, the list goes on. But when you achieve success via your own talent, that's when the pressure cooker really starts, and that's exactly what happened next. <laughs> Weird came out and it was so well received that it went straight to number one and this was Youngblood's first number one album and it was also the start of Youngblood going into the mainstream. Now, someone who puts across as a punk aesthetic going mainstream is never going to be popular with rock fans and this is where a lot of the criticism started. Despite criticism of his music and his upbringing, Weird was a massive success and so was his subsequent tour that completely sold out and overall it went well until one antic and this is the risk of going mainstream. Things that are traditional in rock, if you are getting mainstream and safe with your music, this sort of shit gets you into trouble. But as you get bigger, I got absolutely took down on TikTok for spitting water and beer on an audience when mm. because there's more eyes on me everyone's like hey that's so gross yeah. i've been doing that all my life because i saw iggy pop do it i saw the clash do it i saw the damn the sex pistols i saw bowie do it and that's what happened <laughs> And if so many people are talking about you, eventually you're going to respond. And I think he did it in the best way that was possible because he's not sorry. No one's ever going to believe that he was sorry.
Despite criticism and constant abuse from haters, something that has never been denied is Youngblood's stage presence and the time that he puts aside for his fans. Of the modern generation, it's completely unrivaled and we don't see big names like this give so much time and energy to every single fan that they meet and every show that they put on. But Youngblood, it is always 100% and that's what keeps such a dedicated and loving fan base. Just before this tour, Youngblood was involved in two songs, Patience with KSI and Fleabag. And this is where I come in. I was late to Youngblood. I started listening to him just when Patience came out because I was interested in what KSI was doing off CEs. Completely my era of YouTuber, so I, I've always watched him and I was interested in the music. I saw Patience and was just obsessed. Could not get it out of my head. And then I was like, right, so who is Youngblood? I saw Parents and I was like, oh shit, yeah, I remember this. And then I saw Fleabag and after that, I was obsessed. And luckily for me, Youngblood self-titled album was announced by Youngblood getting a tattoo on his ribs. But with the self-titled and personal approach, would this see Youngblood ditch the safe route into rock music and go more of an independent, loud, brash, don't give a fuck attitude? No. It was mostly a pop album. As much fun as this album was, it failed to hit the same impact as Weird and still felt very safe for someone who is so out there, has got so much energy and looks like such a fucking rock star. I can't believe we're number one again. I just want to say a massive thank you. To well, despite mixed reviews and people having harsh opinions towards it, this album definitely proved that Youngblood was here to stay, securing his second number one album. Fucking album's out! Let's fucking go! Fucking So overall, it's looking pretty clear for Youngblood, but there was one big test. A huge world tour was announced, which included arenas. And that's that's massive. For an artist that has been considered as underrated and up and coming, an arena tour, when the public still aren't sure, that could go horribly wrong. And will it? We'll just have to book tickets and find out. And this leads you on to the greatest day of my life. The day's finally here, we're going to see Youngblood. Currently about 8 o'clock in the morning, we're getting the half 8 train to get to Resorts World in Broome, where hopefully we're going to be one of the first there, so we can get right to the front, maybe even meet him. We do fucking hope. If I could ever make one promise, it's nothing could have prepared me for how amazing that day was. My hype was through the roof before we went, and it surpassed it. <laughs> The show was phenomenal. We didn't know what was gonna happen. We got outside Resorts World at half 10 in the morning. He came on stage at nearly nine o'clock at night. We were knackered. I was outside Resorts World in a fucking dress. I had to piss in a urinal full of people. Couldn't go in a cubicle. I'm in a dress, right? This day was so far out of my comfort zone but I felt fine, I felt amazing. That's the thing, the confidence that this man has put inside me. I Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I, I'm supremely overconfident in stuff that I would do, but it's definitely an improvement to how my confidence was. And then we're standing there in the show and there's just, there's interaction. It's the rainy life for Mars. It's a life on Mars. It's a life on Mars. He's looking over at us. He's running 
every single place on that stage he put his feet. Like, he was all over the place. He came down, he high-fived us twice. <laughs> And it was amazing. He pointed at us whilst doing his encore. And then, which like, it can't get any better than this. So he's come out onto the little stage. I just fucking hope it comes in. And it did. <laughs> I was like, fuck, he's there. He's come out and seen everyone. And I was just thinking, maybe security will shut this down real quick. But they didn't. I met my idol that day. <laughs> so, I've just met Youngblood. My life's now complete. And it's one of my fondest memories I'll ever have. Birmingham, that was fucking incredible! Night two, fucking love ya! Cheers, man in X! When someone mentions young blood to me, the first thing that pops into my head is love. What this community represents is a sense of fucking freedom! So he built his fan base and his community and his dreams and everything off of love. Making it impossible for trans kids to fucking live! I went to see him about two years ago and I walked in there nervous as ever, didn't know what I was walking into, but I just had this overwhelming feeling of love. A government making legislation so people can't fucking protest or can't strike or can't speak out. Well, I won't be fucking silent. And he brings attention to that, like those those deep topics that many artists don't. A sense of fight! This is a generational fucking movement! He saved my life more times than I can count on my two hands and I'll forever be grateful for him and his music and this incredible fan base. This is not about us, it's about the fucking right thing to do! <laughs> so you Rishi Sunak, listen to the kids or we'll fucking eat ya! This was one of the first places I ever came to when I started having not dark thoughts but like down days and started being low in my mood and that was when I was about 13, 14. It was nothing, it was never anything like uncontrollable. It was just times where you'd need somewhere just peaceful to come and clear your head. And what's better than this? There's just no one around apart from the occasional person walking the dog. just fucking nice. I, I still love to come down here every so often because it's just one of the few places you can genuinely think. And even though a lot of the times coming down here were because of sadness, I've got very fond feelings towards this place. So I'm sure a question a lot of you have thought is, why am I doing this? Why am I making 
a documentary about my idol and talking about my own struggle with mental health because it mainly kicked off in 2021. I remember hearing Patience and Fleabag and thinking he was cool. At this time, I was really sick of my job and it was really dragging me down. I left my job thinking that that would make it way better, went to a different job that I hated way more. And very early on there was where my closest suicide attempt had happened, which resulted in me getting rushed to hospital. And luckily I threw up um, just before the ambulance got there. It almost feels surreal to talk about to the internet because I, it's not something I talk about a lot in my personal life. So talking about it to, for fuck knows how many people to hear just, like it's, it's a weird feeling. And it, it was a scary time because I remember waking up at hospital and I was partly angry that I hadn't done it. I didn't want to tell people because if you say that you attempted suicide, but you're not dead, people don't think it's real. And it's still something that I worry about because I think it, it, you question yourself, like, was that really what I wanted? At the time, 100%. Because I'd, I, it, it had been leading up to it for days before. And then there was just one night where I was on my own and it just felt, it felt like that night was the night. And it's so weird to me to think about because it's, I'm a completely different person. I've done a lot of stupid things since then, but I've come out on the other side. But the thing that I think is so beautiful about this story isn't the fact that I was there and now I'm here. It's the people. And the main reason I'm making this documentary is from that time in my life, you see three people just appear more and more into my life. And that's my amazing girlfriend, Casey, who I met at a very dark, but also just like stupid time in my life. My best friend, Luke, who, fuck me, he's got me out of several holes mentally. He's just made me feel like, I don't know, kind of like feeling of safety by just being there. Because loneliness, I will die on this hill, but loneliness is the biggest killer. And young blood. And like I just said, loneliness to me is the thing that really would push me over the edge. The fact that I just resonated so much with his music. Loneliness almost d didn't matter anymore because whenever I was alone, whenever I wasn't with Case or Luke or someone else, whatever, it felt like someone was there and someone was comforting me. And his lyrics, they're not just song lyrics, they're, they're fucking statements that are partly a reason that I'm still here. And there's some songs that I still have vivid memories of just feeling like the worst and at my lowest ever. And one of those songs especially is God Save Me But Don't Drive Me Out. Like, Jesus Christ, I remember being in my cellar, fucking bawling my eyes out, feeling like that when I'm gone, people never know what was going on. And that's one of the biggest reasons that I am so fucking grateful that I'm still here. And that's why I'm making this documentary. I just want 
dumb to know how much he actually helps people. And leading on to the question of who is Youngblood, which is a question that gets asked a lot online and to him. Youngblood's someone who you might love to hate him, but he's saved a lot of lives. And as much as to some people he might come across as this loud, bratty idiot, his songs aren't just, they're not just throwaway lines. Like the, you know, there's so many fucking beautiful lines. Like, I got called an alien for being myself, but I've not got the patience to be someone else. Do you feel like you're irrelevant? Do you feel like you're just scared as fuck? You pride yourself on what you failed to be. But therapy taught me my blood was orange. These are lines that, to some people, who feel misunderstood, finally feel understood and as if they've almost spoke to someone about it. Because sometimes you genuinely cannot describe what you are feeling. And that's all right. But it's all right if you've got something to resonate with and to console you. And to anyone out there who is suffering from depression or mental illness or even just low mood, if you are on your own, just find something that you're passionate about because I promise it will make you feel better. Do I think if I uh, didn't like Youngblood that I would emotionally connect to his songs? No, of course I wouldn't. And I don't expect everyone else to because not everyone else has got the same mindset. But this is why he helps us. And so intensely. I put him on a very similar level to my fucking girlfriend and my best friend. The two biggest influential people in my life. And I'm not going to come on here and try and say that I've had some sort of really difficult life. I haven't. I've got great parents. Like My family's always been there. I've got good mates, I go to work, I earn my money, I've got a very average life. But two years ago, I just went through a very scary and dangerous to myself point in my life. And it's not about where you were, it's about where you are. And if you come out the other side, I'm not acting like, you know, now I'm some sort of fucking millionaire who never feels down. Of course I'm not going to say that, because... That'd be complete bullshit. I don't have supremely dark thoughts on a daily basis and feel like whenever I go to someone who I love's house or see them or whatever, that I have to lie and say that I'm fine because I generally can go, I'm fine, or I'll just say, yeah, I've had a bit of a shit day. Anyone that's watching this, even if you fucking hate Youngblood or you hate me or what, whatever, if you are feeling shit, it does always get better if you go about it the right way. But I'll give you three tips for getting better. Play it smart with who's around you. So if you think you can't trust one of your friends, you can't. Don't tell them anything. Find something you're passionate about. You will dedicate so much time to it and whatever time you dedicate to it, it will distract you. Three, give people a chance. If people show themselves up to be cunts, then that's fine. You can just fuck them off. You don't have anything to do with them. But also you might meet amazing people like I did with Casey, like I did with Luke. And I have met Dom, so I am going to class him as that. Those are my three tips. I really hope it's helped and uh, almost feels like a weight's lifted to actually say that as much as I was shitting myself and I'm shitting myself to put this out. I really hope it has helped you. I've actually got shaky hands from doing this. So thank you for listening and I hope it's helped. My first experience with Youngblood, my older brother showed me the upcoming album to uh, Weird, which was my first introduction. First song I heard, God Save Me, Don't Drown Me Out. And at first I wasn't like, the music I was a bit like, wasn't sure the message in the music video 
I was like, no one at his age is really like providing any message to any of the youth. So I thought, he's a potential. And then when the Weird album came out, Jeremy fell in love with him. My first experience with Youngblood was back in 2019 when I first heard Polygraph Eyes. When I first heard it, I thought that his music was very like relatable, a lot more now than it was back then. Like a lot more of his songs that he's released now I relate to a bit more now. Back in 2019 was when I first got into him and heard him and I just thought, yeah, this guy's sick. I first saw him in 2021 in, I can't remember the arena, but it was a really small venue in Birmingham. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest, because when I first saw him, it was when Cotton Candy came out. His energy is crazy and surprising for like, literally, this album just came out. All the fans knew the lyrics. He was blown away, because I think this was one of his first shows when it premiered. The amount of outfit change he had was, it was so sick. Um, it was one of my first concerts, so it was a good indu introduction. Wow, I've only been to one of his shows, but when I saw him, I thought it was probably one of the best shows I've been to. He was obviously, as we all know, very energetic and doesn't stand still for more than two seconds. But I thought it was so good, and me and Will's mum were in seating, which I think that's probably something I wouldn't do again, just because after watching that show, it was no one around me was up and dancing. I wanted to get up, but because nobody else was up, I was just a bit like, it's going to be too awkward if I stand up. So I think I'd want to go stand in just to experience the full like vibe. Obviously Will was standing like, when I was, because I could see him from where I was sitting and I was just like, that just looks like so much fun. The impact he has on people is crazy. I wouldn't say like, I'm not with like the crazy like fashion, but my friend Will, the stuff that he's impacted on him to the point of, how he speaks, how he presents himself, what he wears, and overall his actual whole mental state's changed in a positive way. And I think he's done that for a lot of people in the, not even like a certain genre, but like the alternative community. He obviously has a very big impact when you watch, you know, that Louis Theroux documentary, you know, you have all these fans that talk about how much he's helped them like come out to their families and that kind of thing. So I think he's definitely built confidence up in a lot of people. And I've witnessed that from like Will, like, you know, he went to a show wearing a dress and makeup. Like, I don't think he'd ever thought he'd ever do that. And obviously, you know, like he's very interactive with them constantly in the DMs, constantly replying to comments, you know, on his posts and stuff like that. So he's definitely like, he definitely has a big impact on people's lives. And I think once those fans have had that interaction, like it sticks with them for life and they probably think about it quite a lot. And I know firsthand that Will thinks about his interaction quite a lot. <laughs> the future I see for Youngblood is like, I generally see him eventually being known as generally one of the greats. I think he's definitely going to mix into other genres. I won't think he's going to constantly be in, in the, you know, the emo slash alternative thing. I think he's going to explore a lot of things and he has, as he's done songs with so many people in different genres. But the future for Youngblood, I can imagine a lot more albums and I think he's going to experiment quite a lot. I see obviously, you know, his most recent songs that he's released are very different to his old style of music. But I think I want to see more of his older stuff, like my favourite album is his first album. I'd love to see more music in that kind of style. And I also want to see like more collaborations. Um, I know obviously he did one recently. I think we just, we want a bit, well I want a bit more anyway. Like I'd love to see him collab with Noah Khan because that's my favourite artist at the minute. <laughs> I think them two could collab together. But yeah, I just think more of his old music. Like I don't get me wrong, I love his new music. But like, I'm not saying that I hate it and it's shit. But I just think a lot of his older music I'd like to see brought back. One thing I'd say, I'd, I'd generally say thank you. Not even just for me, just for certain people around me, especially Will, because I, I don't think without Youngblood, Will would be here, to be honest. Um, I generally think it has saved him. Sounds cliche and fucking cringy, but you know what? It really has. I would just thank him for being him, because if he didn't do what he did, like the music he makes, the way he is, the most important person in my life might not be here. So I just thank him for making the music that he does and just... Just like, for being him, like I say, 
because he's just helped Will so much and like I can just see how much he means to him and you know like obviously he's obsessed <laughs> but yeah I just I just thank him just the overall positivity because you know what in in this scene there's not been a lot it's been a lot of like hate which granted everyone's gonna get that but I think he's actually put a positive thing into it the pleasure of being Will's mum and although I am clearly a middle-aged woman I do love Dom and I love young blood. My three words that I would associate with him is number one relatable. Energetic. Inspiring. He's very humble. So down to earth. Charismatic. He is hilarious. Super super talented. The songs honestly just help me. Overall great guy. <laughs> also a bit mental. Six years of Youngblood being an artist has proved many things, but most importantly it has proved that hate doesn't matter. And like I said, where you have love, you will always have hate, but the most beautiful part of it is, where you have hate, you'll always have love. Anyone is within their right to question his authenticity and even dislike his music, but to some people, this is the difference between life and death. And this is why. Youngblood's not just an artist, it's a feeling, and it's a feeling that millions of people across the world take part in every day. And this is my favourite part of the documentary, it's where all you lot have sent your stuff in, your memories, the great times you associate with the name Youngblood, and here they all are. We are a culture of people that come together every day. We come together to belong. And if you feel like you're out there and you don't belong anywhere, welcome home.
Christmas.